what's going on everybody that's right this is your boy play b coming at you with the apocalypse project podcast it's official you just been tapped i got my man rev with me what's going on rev how you doing hey what's going on everybody am i on you're on <laughs> I'm baby on. okay maybe because my ears there we go yeah. there i am <laughs> hey what's going on everybody it's your boy sir rev the servant uh. here with play b and a special guest all the way from the east coast me <laughs> <Adam. laughs> Adam B uh B Began, right? Vegan. 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 Yeah, you can call me anything, but I will take a fuck. The vegan is <laughs> the vegan has landed, baby. That's what's <laughs> up. Yeah. We're here. Can begin with vegan, brother. That's it. Uh, right, right. Well, it's it's great that, that I finally am able to actually literally speak to you because I've been following well for some context. Um ever since we had talked to the very first paranormal we uh, investigator we spoke to, which was Dr. Heather Lee, who oh, was yeah. a part of the um the uh, uh, Warren, Warren Legacy, Legacy Foundation yeah. of Paranormal Research. We, we spoke with her, who she was the first one we spoke to, and then we spoke with uh, Kenny Torres, Ken, uh, Father Kenneth Torres. Oh, yeah, it's weird saying yeah, that. Yeah, I know, yeah. Father, yeah. Kenneth, Father Kenneth, Kenneth Torres. Yeah, Father Kenneth Torres. Because uh, we, we met him before he actually became ordained. So yeah, it was yeah, just, which is it was, cool. It was just Kenny, but now, now you got to be proper. Yeah. Father. <laughs> hey, next, next, uh, next, if we ever meet him in person, I'm going to bring him a cracker, a wafer. Yeah. <laughs> like, can I get you something to eat? You like a wafer or some wine or something? <laughs> yeah, that's right, the body. The body of Christ. <laughs> Yeah. So we, we've we've t- we've talked to and also Chris uh, McKennell. We talked yeah, to Chris, Chris McKennell, McKennell. Uh, for our uh, uh, for our Halloween special. Yeah. So this is so we had Joe Rogan on here. No, I, I, no, I just I, kidding. I just kidding. <laughs> that would have been that would have been great. Uh, Real impressed now. No, yeah, that would, that, you know we don't want a name drop, but no, you know yeah, because we have no names. Yeah, to drop. we got no. no names to drop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so anyway, so I, I, after getting to know Heather very well and following her page, and then all the other pages you can get the follow eventually that led me down to find our friend here adam and nice. uh, i just started following him and just noticing that you know that he's really active in not just his own podcast in fact i think oh, you right have on. multiple podcasts and we'll talk about that yeah um, you and kenny i think are a part of the with the king's radio net uh networker yeah i know paranormal, uh, paranormal king radio network is Par- based out of quebec canada oh okay and it reaches it reaches its uh, other formats long story short um I was actually on his show last September, and like five minutes after I was his guest, he's like, do you want to come work for me? You, you have a great voice. You can talk. <laughs> you know, he's like, people would love you. He goes, you want your own show? And I'm just tickled pink. I'm like, yeah, every nice. Friday, I get to shoot the shit for an hour. You like, can't you guys beat it. Do. It's fun. Yeah, yeah you it can't fun. beat it, it man. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And it gives us something to do. You know, you get out of the house. You get to, you know, forget about the work week. You know, have some yeah, cold absolutely. ones. and. Yeah. yeah, man, I love it. Yeah, people so- got softball leagues and dart leagues, and they go crochet and sell yeah. their fucking Avon and all that stuff. And I like to, you know, I like to research and do my ghost thing. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Like us. There's a lot of weirdos like us. You know, like, think, we're, 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 we're cut we'll from a different cloth. I, I think that's what makes us unique and interesting. And a lot of people always tell me too, they're like, "Man, I can't do that because I'm shy," or you know, uh, I get in, you know, I'm intimidated with the lights or they're like, I love it. Shit, I'm out here, I'm over here sun tanning with the lights on. I'm like, yo, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. all good. Good. Yeah. Well, you guys are awesome dudes. This is one of the funnest shows I've been on, and we're only a minute into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah, and there's so much we're going to have to unpack today, but the first thing I want to do, I just, I just want to dive a little bit and learn about you a little bit more on yeah. a personal level, and that's something that we did with Kenny also, was that we were able to just to learn about his, the, the, his first experience in, in with, with experiencing the paranormal and then what got yeah. him interested into going into actually yeah. studying. And that, that studying. show we did with Kenny was deep, man. Yeah, I don't know if really... you heard it. Did you get a chance to listen to I it? I went back and listened to some of you. Yeah, because they highly recommended you guys as pretty much the same time you guys hit me up and I went back and I've actually listened to all your stuff. Oh, wow. And that's why I was excited because you guys sound like you, you do now. You guys sound very fun and upbeat and you made it fun <laughs> yeah. to the no, you, seriously, and that's the way it's going to be. You know, I don't. Yeah. I mean, people are so serious, and I guess it's you have to be sometime. But man, it's about having a good. You know, time. I you I, I, re- that, I refuse to grow up, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because hey, growing up, man, you know, I, all my cousins had all the nicest toys, and I'm like just sitting there, like, man. So now, now that I'm older and I can afford this, I, I go to buy myself toys. Okay, my, my wife's like, you get that for Junior? I'm like, hell no, this is mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like walkie-talkies. Yeah, collection back. Pretty nice little collection. Oh, yeah. Back. Oh, you like that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you, you gotta, you, you know what? I, I refuse to grow up. I know Rev's the same way, dude. Yeah, I mean, literally. you just gotta, you gotta have fun. Life's yeah. too short, you, I you think. You could mature and still keep your childlike wonderment. Yeah, who taught you that hate yeah. speech? No. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. anyways, let, let's get a little bit about, about you. Like, how, what like where, where did where did you first experience the paranormal, and how did that change your life and to do the things that you do now? 
Okay. Um, well, I guess like anybody else, my first death that I really experienced, I guess, was a cat. I remember my cat, like when I was six. Oh, not a big deal. Um, but when I was nine uh, in 1988, I'm an old fart. 1979 is when I was born. <laughs> um, we're, we're not too far uh, behind you, bro. <laughs> no, no. Um, my grandfather, my French grandfather, Beijing, where I get the name from, Began, um, he literally died in front of me. Um, oh, wow. He was in the hospital uh, for lung cancer, and we knew this for a while, and it was his birthday, and yeah. I went there with a card, and literally, like, dude, at nine years old, I saw him flatline. I saw extremities come out of his mouth, vomit. I saw his eyes. People were flipping out, crying. They were shooting all the kids out, and I kind of yeah. got lost in the shuffle and just stared at him and watched my grandfather die at nine. Mm. Um, pretty traumatic. Uh, yeah, then a year or so yeah. later, my other grandfather died, my mom's dad, and he. this is where I saw my first – apparition mm. or i wasn't on acid i was 10 years old <laughs> but um <laughs> i woke up and he basically walked me to the fridge to get a, a glass of water or milk or whatever and i thought it was a dream i didn't know until like eight years later when my sister told me she he came to her that night too oh wow. so at 16 17 i'm like holy shit like you know what i mean and of course we had ghostbusters but we didn't really have ed and lorraine wasn't really known so much you didn't have all this stuff so it was yeah. kind of a it's almost like freaky. Nowadays, it's more accepted. It's almost cool if you see a ghost. But back then, you know, 1990, 1991, it's like, right. oh, this kid's going to be locked up, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, and of course, I, I, you know, I went to the same high school as author Stephen King, Lisbon, oh. Maine. He grew up in Durham. Nice. So, at a young age, yeah, at a young age, too, I've been, been aware to UFOs, monsters, and just all the stuff. So, I've kind of been around it my whole life. My mom Grew, uh, you know, raised me on Steppenwolf and Black Sabbath and Alice Cooper yeah. and Old School Rock and Horror Metal. I watched, yeah, I watched The Shining when I was like nine, so I've always been into that. Here's Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Most people are going to go crazy and schizo and say, "I'm not. That's not for me. I've seen too much." But me, um, unfortunately, in 2019, three months after Lorraine Warren passed away, my mom passed away unexpectedly. Oh man, sorry to hear that. That shocked me. Yeah, that shot me down. Um, that uh, that really messed me up. I've I've kind of been living in an RV um, off the grid for about three years since I kind of quit my job and I DoorDash, and uh, that's why I get to go to so many places because I can DoorDash. Mm, Name drop nice. DoorDash sponsor me. I can do that in any city. I've DoorDash in Salem, Gettysburg, Iowa. Wow, I've done DoorDash in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and I can cash out that day. So it kind of keeps me. You know, it's not gonna. I still need obviously more, but for the most part, that's. I live very modest. And um, I got my mom's car when she passed away in 2019. And actually, yesterday was the year anniversary oh. where I died for 36 seconds in a car accident. Oh, really? Oh, wow. It was demolished. I got hit head on. Um, the guy didn't have insurance. And uh, they never found him. He, he literally, to this day, we don't know where the fuck he is. And I didn't get Man. a dime out of that. I still have tremors at night. So I still have visions. My mom came to me. Uh, I believe she told me to crawl out of the car. I did pass out and don't remember much, but I told my girlfriend, Heather, um, my mom told me to get out and my airbags are orange. She goes, airbags are white. And I don't know, you know, maybe we go see the car the next couple of days later, get my shit out and the airbags are orange. Oh, dang. I know my mom. I know my mom talked to me. I, I have her ashes. I, I hold them very much with me. Um, oh, awesome. Man. And, and I feel like she, you know, so, so my whole life I've been in tune to it. And now it's doing my own paranormal thing, and now rubbing elbows with Tony Spera and Chris McKennell being yeah. in the Warren Legacy. <laughs> yeah. It's really, it's I'm really realizing this happens to a lot of people, and yeah. I get hit up a lot with people that just want help, and I direct them to the Legacy as a whole. You're right. And yeah. then I say, "We can help you." Someone in Tennessee hit me up the other day. I said, "Well, I'm in Maine, but I can reach out." So there's awesome. a lot of people like us, you know, yeah. and it, it's really shaped me to respect graveyards and, and cemeteries and. I go in and I try to help repair them. I go by myself sometime at night mm. and just lift up stones. Oh, Cops wow. have seen me in cemeteries and, what are you doing? I go, ghost hunter. They go, ah, shouldn't <laughs> be here. I go, I'm fixing the stones. He goes, come back during the day. You shouldn't be here at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wouldn't find me. Well, you know what's crazy is that. <laughs> no? No. Oh. Okay, yeah, well, there, there's an interesting thing to it. <laughs> so, like, there, 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 before we met Heather, there was this, there's this cemetery that we have oh, here, here in our town. And it's an old cemetery. Well, yeah, Modesto. Modesto's Cal not that. It doesn't go back too far. No, but, I mean, back too far. it's relatively well, old for the Stanislaus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Stanislaus County. So, here, yeah, here in California, there's not much. I mean, the oldest thing you go back is probably like to the 1850s, I think, is about the like oldest that. you go back. So, But anyway, so there's an old cemetery here in town that's on one, a main thoroughfare in the city. Yeah, I mean, every. And, and what's worse, <laughs> uh, across the street from this Ooh. cemetery, there's a. Uh, 
a hospital. Well, yeah. it's no longer a functioning hospital, but they still have family practice stuff in there. But can you imagine back in the day, you're in this hospital looking out your bedroom hospital window, and there's the cemetery. You're like, damn, <laughs> if I don't make it here, I'm going to end up over oh, there. Yeah. Like, shit. Oh. Yeah. So, but Good luck in surgery, Dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're like, why are you guys buying roses? What the fuck? Yeah. So oh. anyway, so, but the cemetery here, it, it's right on next to the road. It's a pretty large cemetery, yeah. but there's always a lot of traffic, always right. on a day. Yeah. And I always thought, it's that, that seems kind of weird. I mean, I don't know how you feel about having a main road sit that close to 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 a cemetery. But at night, even though it's still a main road, I still could not get myself to even get close to it. Even walking by there, we, oh, I we walked that. by yeah. there one time, and it was just like just eerie. I, I could not oh. see myself going in. Well, you know what's crazy? I was listening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's not to, to, it's not for everyone, and I get that. But <laughs> it's. It's yeah, it's something I don't know. I feel welcome there. And like, I don't know, someone, a psychic actually told me that I have psychic abilities. Oh. And the reason why I go to these places is because You're there's like a little something? boy spirit with me saying, hey, check this place out. Because I literally, I'll stop at anything for the most part that I feel is historic or haunted. Nice. I mean, I've I've been in mills and in, in cemeteries and, and uh, the woods. <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> the woods, shit. man. I love going out to the woods. Um, but you yeah. know what's crazy, is, especially per- pertaining to cemeteries, is I was listening to a podcast and the girl was called in and she goes, you know, I don't know, maybe this is weird, but I like to go to the cemetery and just read books there. She goes, it's quiet. No one bothers you. She goes, and I just sit there and I'll read and then sometimes I'll read aloud just like if there's people there. She goes, I, I enjoy doing that. Wow. I'm like, what? She goes, yeah. Uh, dude, me and my husband go picnic at the cemetery. It? I was, she goes, it's beautiful. Look, she goes, you look yeah. around, they're real nice. I was like, <laughs> dang. <laughs> well, it's funny. If you do your research, which that's what I'm known for. In the <laughs> early 1900s, families would picnic in cemeteries next to their loved one's grave. They'd have a little basket and bonnet. Google it. Google f- picnics in cemeteries. Oh, dude. wow. And people used to go there with their bonnets and shit. And they'd lay a blanket down and they'd have a, sometimes they'd even leave a sandwich for their dead one. And well, there you go. And they'd, yeah. You know, whatever well, that that well, and, and I think that's all. But here in California, because there's such a heavy Hispanic and uh, Mexican American influence, yeah. Like w- whenever I pass by the cemetery, because I, I have to go by, drive by there multiple times a day, that there's there's always like Mexican families out there with lawn chairs sitting in oh. the grave with families, and I think it's because, of course, with the Mexican culture, you right. know, with the Day of the Dead and the things along those lines, yeah. I think they have that that they have that they, they keep that tradition going. And, and, and well, what you know saying. what what tradition I keep alive for? for I, I, I would just raise this way, if, you know, with my grandparents. If we're driving and we're driving by a cemetery, they'll turn the music down, or if they're they're doing a burial, turn the music off. You know, out of respect for the family and the dead, you know. So yeah. now I catch myself driving, and if I'll come up Scenic Road where that cemetery is, I find myself just instinctively just turning the music off. I'm like, well, wait, what the heck? But I just ingrained Aww. in me, you know what I mean? From, from just a child, just respect <laughs> yeah. the dead, you know, respect the dead. You know, I was like, okay. And uh, so that's always something that's been with me. I always just thought it was funny. I'll catch myself here and there like, oh, what the heck? I'll, I'll laugh to myself like, what am I doing? They did their job. They ingrained it in you. Here you are an adult. <laughs> you don't even around them, and you're still doing it. Yeah, that's it's a trip, cool, man. Though. That's that's the old school traditions. A lot of I think we can learn a lot. People yeah. are so worried, or people are saying, "Oh, can't get the old ways anymore. Got to move forward. Got to progress." Yeah. Sometimes some of the old ways aren't that bad, and maybe we kind of need that. Yeah. yeah, that's just my opinion. But yeah. well, and let's go into that because I know that you do a lot of traveling, and 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 to be honest with you, everything you just talked about, like in this up until this point, you could do a whole separate episode on. Yeah, man, your, that's your, awesome. Your life <laughs> as a, a you know your should write RV a book. life to write a book. <laughs> write man. A book. I'm, I'm, I've been told I should, and I want to. I just I, I want. I just I don't know. It, it's hard because I sit down and I'm like, uh, once upon a time, like, what do I, I don't know. Like, you just got to this fat stoner kid from Maine. Yeah, hibbity hibbity hoo. Yeah, but so anyway, so you, 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 like I said, everything you've talked about, you could do an episode, we could do an episode on, especially oh, the RV. We should just thing. do a whole series on the that. The RV awesome. thing sounds oh. really interesting. Like, how did, how did, how do you make that transition? But we'll save that for another day. I'm actually jealous. <laughs> I'm envious of you, man, just to have that freedom, though. You know what I mean? It, it, it that just sounds awesome. You know, that's it's, pretty cool. Like I said, I mean, there's times when I got my girlfriend, she's got her kids. I don't have any of my own, but I consider her kids kind of mine, but they're yeah. getting older too. Yeah. But she's very, she's very much like last year, my, my friend from my birthday, um, in the September, he's like, uh, I've known him since I was like eight. One of my only friends is still alive. That's another story. I got a lot of friends that have passed around me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if I'm jinxed or not, but anyway, so he, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. No one should be my friend anymore. You might die. I don't know what to tell you. Uh. Like I, moved, I, 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 I actually recently just kind of shacked up with my friend in New Hampshire. And like, after living there for a week, his mom died. Like, oh, snap. Yeah. 
dude, like, I don't know. Uh, maybe because I stayed at Lizzie Borden's. I don't know. I try oh not to goodness. give that stuff power. I don't know. So, but, um, yeah, man, it's it's rewarding. And, and like I said, my friend grabbed me. He's like, we're going to go to Pennsylvania. We're going to go see uh, America's first serial killer, H.H. H. Holmes. We're going to go see his grave site. Oh, that's so cool. We went to go see, and we ended up seeing about 40 different places, a vampire's grave, a house made out of tombstones, you name it. What? And we really milked it for a week and a half, and all we did was stay at campgrounds for in very modestly, if you a lot of these places, actually 99% of the places we went to were free admittance. Like you said, graveyards, there's no fee. So yeah. we do a graveyard with Gore, Gore's lead singer. You guys ever heard of Gore? Oh, Gore, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah. He's really? buried in the state. Yeah, he's buried in Richmond Cemetery, the same cemetery as the Richmond Vampire. Whoa. So I saw his grave. That's a whole story too, man. So nice. there, there's, yeah, there's two presidents buried there too and a couple civil war people bunch of gettysburg dead and it's all for free so i made a whole day i did five youtube videos out of it and people just go they can't fucking believe it their mouths drop yeah and i'm like i didn't do anything special but you well, just gotta do it see but that, you're a visionary to to you know in every sense of the word because a lot like i never would have thought of going to cemeteries and it's free like you said i mean you don't need no budget to do that oh man you know hey free content right there you know you're on something there you guys on the West Coast, you guys got crazy. Like, I want to go to the cemetery where Hugh Hefner is buried to Marilyn Monroe. You guys could document <laughs> those two graves alone. Yeah, yeah, we seriously. should. Uh, That's in Southern California. We, we, we could try to make it down there. That'd be cool. And yeah, on the way, we'll stop by visit Kenny. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, because Kenny's over go. here in Vallejo. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? There you go. So, uh, you, you take a little video of the Hotel Cecil. Take a selfie oh, there. Yeah. Walk inside. Do a video. People love that shit. Oh, yeah. Well, that, oh, that's another man. thing, too. It's like you're familiar like uh, with a lot of the background and history with all these places. Because, like I've said, you've been to so many different places. And um, I want to kind of go over to some of the, the most significant places that have a lot of historical uh, significance in uh, uh, in your side of the country. Because, of course, like I said, we're in California, so we know very little about some of the historical areas or historical, uh, even the haunted areas there yeah. in Maine. So what, what, what are the most significant historical places that you've been and experienced some um, paranormal or went to go <laughs> investigate whether you found something or not? Wow. Um, great question. And, and obviously not to knock you guys, because you do are a little younger, so to speak, than the east side. But you still got your wild, wild west and all that shit. Yeah. you got a lot of great stuff out <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I know. I, I, can't, I want to hit out to, like, Tombstone, Arizona or you oh, know, Lincoln, yeah, New Mexico. Mary, all that stuff. Yeah. I'll be tight. Um, so for, for me, I'm literally about two hours away from Salem, oh, which wow. capital of the world. Yeah. And I've, I've done my research, and I've been to where the witches were literally hung. People think it's up top of Proctor's Hill, this big ledge. Oh, yeah. If you, if, you, if you do a little bit of reading, <laughs> I don't really watch shows. I don't really Netflix and shit. Wrestling is my only thing I really watch. Other than that, I'm literally I'm – just, I'm just documenting and researching and history and bios, and I'm constantly – I want to fill my brain with with shit. I don't care about Desperate Housewives. I want, yeah, know, right. Like I said, wrestling's my guilty pleasure. But anyway, um, Salem, right in back of the Walgreens there, there's a little plot of a hill. There's no memorial. There's no fee. No one's selling sage or T-shirts. But it's where they were hung, um, you know, oh, 19 wow. men and women. So I went there. And, and just Salem alone, dude, the streets underneath, there's so many tunnels because of the pirates and speakeasies. Oh, wow. Um, I've been to the House of Seven Gables. Um, Hawthorne Hotel, where they shot episodes of Bewitched. Elizabeth Montgomery was there. Mm. Um, so Elizabeth Montgomery, short real quick, um, she's actually third cousins to Lizzie Borden. Really? Yeah. I, uh, me and my <laughs> girlfriend Heather, right before my mom passed away in 2019, we got our income tax in, and we stayed at Lizzie Borden's house. Nice. <laughs> Will <laughs> River <brother>. willingly. <laughs> That is so cool. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and and we did it on a Thursday. We figured it wouldn't be so busy. And so we get there. And, dude, I made a whole day out of it. We went to H.P. Lovecraft. You've heard of him? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he we was went to that, his grave yeah. in Providence. We went to the house where he died, his house across from the Williams College in Rhode Island. Um, I went to the Historical Society in Fall River, and the girl goes, you want to take over the tour? You know more about Lizzie than I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No shit. That's no shit. That's so badass. that was cool. <laughs> well, how, how, much, how much of your, 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 your background knowledge of all the historical context of all of these, uh, these, these paranormally active areas helped you in your investigation going forward, whether maybe it's a spot that somebody asks you to come to that isn't a historical like well-known location, but is experiencing what is said to be paranormal activity. How does your knowledge in, in history help you with 
those cases? I, I guess because I, I guess with, like with a lot of mediums or psychics, they don't want to know anything. They want to be right. But you always get that one guy who the historian, so to speak, <laughs> that wants to know things that way he can compare. Mm. So if someone gets a voice on a, a box or if someone hears Margaret, why did I hear Margaret? Well, Margaret Thatcher died here in 1905 by an axe to the head or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. like to have that shit. Yeah. When I post, as you could tell, when I post my pictures, I don't leave much room for questions. I tell you the year, the place, the town, what happened there, the year I went. And here's my hashtag. Check out my shit. Adam the Historian Ghost Hunter. So I, I, I don't leave much unturned. I like that. I don't like looking at stuff and going, well, who's that? Well, yeah. Why were they there? What was here before? I like asking the questions, but I really love the answers. Yeah, <laughs> like when right. I, went to, I went to Plymouth Rock in Plymouth, Massachusetts, 1620. No, nice. And the tour guide was there, and I and I said, you know, I said the original rock was was about a half mile out that way, and it's been dragged up here and chipped away by people. And he goes, "That's correct." He was all proud. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah." I said, "You know, because a lot of people they go and they see it and they take pictures and they fucking Facebook it, and that's right. good enough." But I want I want to digest this stuff. See, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, and then that goes back to Lizzie's, right? So we get there, dude, right? And uh, the girl's like, the tour guy, because you get a free tour with it. She goes, oh, the other two families canceled. You have the whole house to yourself. Oh, Don't nice. die. Oh, Just shit. Door. I'm like, oh, it's like a $1,200 value to rent out the whole house. It's like $1,300. bucks. we paid 220 for the whole house. Dang. You can't beat that. Okay. So I want to. That's badass. I want to back. I did. There was something I watched some years ago where I think they were doing an investigation, a professional investigation. It wasn't like these YouTube uh amateurs but it was actually le legitimate um i forgot who it was i should i now that i now that i know you stayed there i wish i would have researched it more yeah but uh the, <laughs> but they uh they they did uh an investigation and they 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 picked up some things on the evps and i thought that was really interesting it kind of really freaked me out but they literally went to the house they went through all the places they looked at everything so Shit. did you experience anything while being in lizzie borden's house <laughs> Uh, put it this way. That's, that's the first time since my early twenties. Like I, I probably went when I was about 37, 38. That was the first time in a good 20 years prior where I literally pulled an all nighter. Cause I couldn't sleep. Really? The energy, the energy was flowing. Cause the, um, the house next door that was there, that was Lizzie's aunt. And yeah. she killed her three kids and then herself in the basement before Lizzie even got to that house. So Damn. that whole land is fucking tainted for one. Shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I asked Heather and I have it somewhere. I'll have to send you guys. I have it on my audio recorder. I said, hey, Lizzie or whoever's here. Do you, are you guys sick of people coming here and asking questions every day? And three seconds goes by. And I do swear to God, I heard a thump and the glass chandelier above me shook. The window shook. The whole oh, like a dump truck went by maybe and hit the ground. But it didn't. It was like 10 o'clock at night. So that was good. Yeah, <laughs> that, was using her that, dousing rod. She yeah. lit right <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that was good. And then oh, in the basement where they found the hatchet, the murder victim uh, oh. weapon, I have an orb, a blue orb on this uh, shop vac, kind of glue up. I like, you know, glowed a little bit. And then I, it kind of went to the wall. And then I looked on the wall. I'm going to send you guys this in Messenger. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a face on the wall. Oh, where the well is, but it's not transparent almost like it was drew on there a long time ago i can't describe it really? very very peculiar and Man. of course i stayed in the list I, I heather passed out in the murder room where the mother was killed <laughs> and uh and she That's slept like much. an hour but i ended up going to lay in lizzie's bed and i stripped right down i'm not naked i'm like i'm, I'm gonna go right there what's up I'm <laughs> like, I, love you. I just laid on her bed and i waited and i felt little tickles all over me I just, <laughs> oh yeah man it's like i tell you yeah, I'm but, it, I, it's, I, I, it's, it's like that scene from you, Ghostbusters you know what, with I, Dan Aykroyd. I, <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say i've been on that website you know what you should have done no when you were there you should have called 209-214-9472 that's the phone number here at the, the apocalypse project yeah, podcast give us a call Hey, if you've ever had some intercourse with a ghost, call in and yeah. <laughs> let us know. That's it. You know, say, I mean, you hey, disease. You can't get him pregnant. It's impossible. Uh -huh. <laughs> it goes right through it. Yeah, like like my, like my buddy says, he goes, I never went to bed with an ugly woman, but I woke up to a few. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a ghost. That's tequila, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> that's not paranormal. <laughs> you uh, wish it was paranormal at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. At that point, you're like, shit, oh, what did I do? What wish did you, I do? Wish you can get ghosted. Uh-huh. <laughs> And he, every time I talk to him, he's like, man, Jose, did it again. I did it again, oh. brother. I was like, well, there you go. Oh, Damn. man. But, you know, let me ask you real quick before I forget, yeah, because yeah, I had a very, well, my wife experienced a very interesting thing called a doppelganger. 
Now, yes. she, she, but check this out. So it was me and my son in the living room, right? And my wife gets home from work. She goes to the restroom, and there's like a hall, you know, in our, our bedrooms, the restrooms at the end of the hall. But my son's in the living room with me. And as my wife was walking back from the restroom, she was talking to him in the room. She, you know, she passed his room. She was junior A. She's talking to him. And then she comes around the corner. She sees me and him talking. And she's like, what the? She's like, what the fuck? I was just talking to you in the room right now. And, wow. and she, I goes like, what? And now, I've heard a lot of things around doppelgangers. Maybe I heard that it's a good thing. I've heard that they're bad. You know, uh, I heard that it's especially bad if you see your own doppelganger. That means you're, you're going to die or something. But uh, what, what, what's your take on doppelgangers? Because I really don't know much about that. That's funny. The first time I ever got introduced to a doppelganger, I was playing, I think it's Spider-Man, Spider-Man video game. There's a doppelganger, Spider-Man doppelganger, four-armed Spider-Man oh, doppelganger in there. And that was back in the 90s. But then I started realizing it was a, it was a term for like, Basically, you're almost like your future self, but your present self, if that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. And and I read a book. Ed, Ed Warren wrote it. It's about uh, Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren. It's about um, it's called Satan's Harvest. And it's about a guy, Maurice Thibodeau, who was actually from Maine and he moved to Massachusetts and he was possessed. And actually, Chris McKinnell was there and helped perform the exorcism on mm. it. And um, in the book, I don't want to give too much of it away. It's a great read. With a name like Satan's Harvest, how could it not be, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, All right. Uh, so he was, he, he, his wife saw him walk through the thing and said, Maurice, what are you doing? And he just walked through the wall, or not through the wall, but to the next room. She turned around and he came out and goes, what are you talking to? And she turned around and she's like, what? She was two Maurice's, a doppelganger. Yeah. I've never experienced it, and it sounds fucking loco, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I've read some stuff on it. Like, you know, the black eyed kids and shadow people. Yeah. I've never seen it. You know, skinwalkers. I've never really seen it. I'm honestly open to almost anything. With the shit that you guys see nowadays, how could you not be, right? Yeah, right. For I sure. Mean, almost anything's possible, but I myself have never experienced it. I do believe they're there, but I hear they're demonic. I hear it's not a good thing. Mm. I don't know. Uh -oh. I'm not trying to scare you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. That's why I'm asking questions. I want to be informed and see what we're dealing with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's interesting. I, I, that's the first time I heard. You no, well, it just happened like maybe two weeks, uh, two or three weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, can't, I I meant to bring it up and I forgot. We were recording and I, I meant to bring it, bring it up and I forgot all about it. That's uh, Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, my wife was tripping out. Girl. She was tripping balls. She was like, what the fuck? Yeah, but I, 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 I thought a doppelganger was just somebody that you happen to come across that looks like yourself or looks like somebody else. You know, because, you know, with the gene pool in the world, there's only so much that can go yeah. around your venture. Well, I mean, there is somebody out there that looks all, exactly like you. All I know, doppelganger is German for, like, body double or something like that. But, um, right. But yeah, um, something like that. yeah, it's something like that. But yeah, essentially, or a lot of people say, you know, like for instance, I could see you come down the stairs, hey Rudy, whatever, and then all of a sudden I look up and then you're coming down the stairs again. Like again? what the heck, you know? Like weren't you <laughs> like just a, in like it? a glitch in the matrix? Yeah. Well, you know what's crazy is my gra <clears throat> my grandma when she was uh, when we were all younger, uh, she she saw my cousin April walk by her, <clears throat> and my grandma goes, hey April, how you doing? And whatever, so she was like, and then she runs into my aunt, which is my cousin April's mom, and she goes, hey, what's wrong with April? She didn't even talk to me. And then she's like, and she goes, no, April's asleep. She's like, no, I just talked to her right here on the landing, you know, the stairs, uh, the landing of the stairs. And she goes like, no, she's, well, let me go check on her. And so they walk up there, and sure enough, she's asleep in the bed. And Whoa. my grandma goes, I just talked to her, but she ignored me. You know what I mean? Uh, crazy stuff. So I you don't know. You had two stories of a doppelganger. I've never heard anybody even say one, really. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah, wow. but that was my grandma, the, my grandma's story that I just mentioned right now. But yeah, dude, that's the trip. And then my mom <laughs> saw that same. <laughs> Your mom had seen some. Oh, my, well, because I don't know if you knew this, but my mom grew up in like this haunted house in Gilroy, Gilroy, California. It was like one oh. of the last oldest house. It was original to the town's founding. And uh, they found a lot of weird stuff there, but the house was so old that the city came in and they, they condemned the house, so they had to move out. But then oh. they used it for fire uh, practice or whatever. You know, they burned it. The fire department oh, yeah, came yeah. in. Training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Training. But anyway, my mom goes, when they were in the basement, one time she fell through the, uh, through the opening. She fell in the basement. And she goes, I don't know how long I was unconscious for. But when I woke up, she goes, I felt this evil presence around me. She goes, so I just started praying. Whoa. And then all of a sudden in the corner, oh, now I got chills. In the corner of the basement, she says, that, you know, like you see the Virgin Mary, how they have the, the light radiating out of the Virgin Mary and stuff. She goes, I saw yeah, that. Like an aura, like an aura. Yeah, yeah. She goes, I saw that all white. It lit up the room and it was coming towards me and I felt at peace. And that's when she looked up and her brother picked her up out of there. 
And uh, they've seen, she, she's seen ghosts. Wow. Uh, my grandpa, wow. my grandpa in that house one time, he, he was working construction, you know, back in the day. So he was up three, four in the morning, whatever, getting ready for work. And he's washing his face and he looks out the restroom window and he sees this little boy dressed like in the 1920s, you know, with the, he had his books with the belt, you know, they would put the belt around the books and he would just, he was standing on, on the yeah, thing yeah, yeah. and he was looking at my grandpa. My grandpa's like, what the fuck? So he runs out there and he's gone. Like they experienced so oh. many crazy shit. I mean, if you go to the museum you, there, I think they still have a little expose about that house but that's the house my mom grew up in and the reason I go why'd you guys get that house because because it was so cheap no one wanted to live there <laughs> so grandpa rented it you know and he goes we'll that's make what? we'll make do fuck it you know what I mean so the water would turn on by itself all oh, this crazy shit. shit yeah and I was like no way mom she goes yeah uh, my, her, my 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 mom, my aunt my mom's uh, sister would wake up with like hickeys on her neck bite marks a bunch of crazy shit she would say the devil was raping her and all this crazy stuff <laughs> crazy stuff man what yeah my mom said I have your family on my show dude. yeah <laughs> dude well, actually my mom talked a little bit about it when we had the servants but my mom said one time she was in the restroom using the restroom and then she looks up and she sees a out of nowhere a bassinet and a baby's hands reaching towards her and my mom was like what the fuck you know and and then she ran out, and then that's when she ran in, and she fell into the basement. Uh, so, yeah, we should get my mom back on here. Yeah, we should probably talk to her again. <laughs> Maybe all of us. Like, we'll get you yeah, back on here. Definitely. Yeah, but my, yeah, my mom, she, she shared some great. stories. Yeah. Brain. Yeah. yeah. She, she tripped out. She said when they, uh, when they excavated the, the, the basement, they were pulling out tombstones and, like, sacks. Like, like uh, you know, like those, uh, not flower sacks, but, you know, those other... What's, what's that name of that material I'm thinking like of? Burlap? Canvas? Canvas? Burlap. Yeah, burlap. burlap. Yeah, burlap sacks of stuff. And then my uncle one time in the backyard, he found a little skull made out of gold. It had ruby eyes and, and all this and that. So he, he, he had it in his room. And then one day, that same night, he woke up and he saw the skull over his other brother looking at him going, nyang, 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 y'all crazy. And then so he told my grandma. My grandma goes, put that back where you found it. You know, don't. <laughs> and so he did and that, and that stuff. But they seen a lot of paranormal stuff in that house, you know. Little kids be up Dude, on the. I tell you, I've actually, I've actually returned some things too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I don't I've even return a couple items because well, I'm like, I even wrote a note. I'm like, I'm sorry, I took this. Please forgive me. And I look. Yeah, well, you know, to be honest, honest with you, that's why I don't even shop yeah. at. That's why I don't. I, honestly, that's I'm scared. Uh, I, and I don't shop at um, thrift stores anymore or or at uh, yard sales because you could pick something up and it could have some attached to it. And and that's what my grandma used to. Because my grandpa, he'll see something for free. Fuck it, that's mine. You know, ironing board, whatever. You know, and my grandma. You know, he would bring stuff home and things start happening. She goes, "No, go t- throw that shit. Pay- take it back. Don't bring things here." You know, no. and and, and, and I even, I've, I've had hemorrhoids for five days. Bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I even heard too. I don't know if this is an old superstition or or whatever, but you know, when you know we can invite spirits in our house. Um, Without even realizing it, like, you know, I know a lot of older folks don't like to have a welcome mat that says welcome because, you know, you're inviting. You know, they always say, you know, this is our home or God bless our home. You see older people always say God bless this house or whatever, but they never have a welcome, you know, mat. And for that reason that they believe you can bring in, you're welcoming anything to come in, you know? Yeah. You know what's funny? I was watching a documentary the other day, and I was talking about the uh, the Black Eyed Kids and how, have you ever heard of them or not? And like in Ohio and stuff, these, uh-huh. these kids, they show up, they're all white as ghosts, and they talk like old time, almost like, is it, like, almost like they're aliens, like they don't know how to say our language, like, is it food time instead of is it supper uh, they go is it food time like weird things let us in can you let us in can you say they want to be let in just yeah. like a vampire the old school if you don't let them in when i leave a graveyard dude it's funny whenever i leave i say thank you for your time you're not allowed to follow me back stay here you're not allowed to come back with me if yeah. you do i have people that will take care of it i know many i know shamans i know fucking yeah. exorcists i know a bunch of people so i i, I you got to set the boundary and i think taking stuff too that's not yours if it belonged there it's not like the house that you guys were talking about something like it was bur- on a burial ground or something well you know? remember back in the days they would bury people in the yard or whatever you know and I, yeah. that might have been part of the yard the yard and then they built onto it you know and i don't know yeah. honestly my mom knows more about it but you know i've i heard um I don't know how true this is. I even forgot where I heard it, but I heard it in, in cemeteries, especially older ones. They would put St. Michael's medals on all the corners to kind of create a boundary to keep the spirits in there from 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 escaping. That would keep them from escaping. I don't know how true that is, but have you heard anything about yeah. that? Superstition, especially in paranormal, uh, <laughs> is... Oh, man, people got railroad spikes in their house because it's an old witchcraft thing where if you have a railroad spike in each corner of your house, demons mm. can come in. I know people that use salt. I use sage on the daily, uh, Polysanto sticks. Uh-huh. I burn that a lot. 
Um, I have yeah. a, um, I have a, what is it called? Cellulite, cellulite. It's like a crystal. Oh yes. Yeah, cellulite. Or, um, uh, but you know what I'm talking about? I have a, yeah. I only have one right now, but I want to put four. They say you should have four, you know, one in each corner of your home and it help ward off evil yes. spirits. Or you're like, what I do with mine is I'll put my wedding ring on it at night to absorb, to, to, to take away all the energy negative or whatever. Yeah. Um, out, of the, I, out of the wedding ring. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but then I also carry this with me now I'm weird. So no one make fun of me, but I have this worry stone I keep in my pocket. You know what I mean? And uh, sometimes when I'm anxious, I feel anxiety. I just rub it, you know, and I just I, yeah. I, I try to imagine yeah. all my anxiety going into the stone. And then if it's not it's a full moon. Man. Yeah, but it, it works. And but if and then and then I heard, you know, well, you got to cleanse it. You got to clear it out because you're going to over stuff it. And it's not going to work. Well. So uh, I was talking to this lady and she goes, well, what you could do is put it in the windowsill. If there's a full moon. Really? Or, or you could put it in salt water for yeah, for, for, for half it. an hour. Yeah, you charge it like you charge holy water. You yeah, holy water or something in the, in the in the full moon. Yeah, the moon's power is absorbent. Yeah, so my my girlfriend's a witch, Heather, um, and this is her. So oh, she's nice. She's into all the she's all the crystals. She's actually got her own show too, Witch and Life Guide show. Oh, right on. on. Paranormal thing, and uh, she knows she's got me always grounded. Uh, whenever you know, I'm like. You guys don't know me, but you here you can tell I'm gun ho. And if there's no if there's not a no trespassing sign, I'm fucking there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's always like, uh, careful, look around. I don't feel so good. She's she's always kind uh, of eh. And I'm yeah. just like, ah, yeah. <laughs> diving into that deep, you know. Well, oh, well, well like I think <laughs> I think for me it's like I, I I'm so interested. I want to see something, but I don't want to see something. You know, I've I've heard I've yeah. auditory yeah. experiences in my life. You know, I've heard ghosts and stuff. Uh, but I've never seen anything like one time when we were kids, we were little, we lived in Gilroy. Gilroy must be haunted for whatever reason, but real quick, cause I know we're running short on time, but when we were little, uh, we're all dead asleep. Right. And all of a sudden we hear the, the, the kitchen window over the sink just crash. Boom. And then back in the day we had the metal blinds, you know, so they oh, made yeah, hell yeah. of noise and you can yeah. literally hear someone land on the, on the counter and the dishes were rattling and then you can hear them jump off. Boom. And then so I woke up, grabbed my little sister, ran to my mom's room, and they're getting up. My mom grabbed a knife. My dad had a bat. And they put it. They grabbed all three of us, and they put us underneath the crib. They go, just stay here. You know, don't move. Don't make a sound no matter what happens. Well, they cleared the whole house. Nothing was amiss. Nothing was moved. And then she's like, what the heck? So she asked the security guard the next day. She goes, hey, around such and such time. He goes, yeah, no, there was no one out. And she's like, dang, I guess. But, we, you know, we've I've heard things. And I've seen, I, the only thing I did see was a shadow one time after my grandpa's passing. I was sitting in my bed, I was on my bed, and I'm looking, you know, I had his, like, his ID, his wallet, you know. So I'm going through all this stuff, and all of a sudden, I just seen someone, like, duck by the foot of the bed. Boom. And I was, I looked, I was like, what the heck was that? And But I didn't see any, you know, went, look, I didn't see anything. But uh, Corner but, of your eye, yeah. That's but, what they do. They like to pop up and, oh, they're right there. Yeah. And then here's another crazy thing. Um, when, you know, when, when you go to a Catholic funeral, they give you the cross that was hanging on the casket. You can take it with yeah. you. So I have one of those. Yeah. I can't remember if it was my grandma or my grandpa's. So I have to ask my mom. But I hung it on the head of my bed, and my dad bent the nail up, right? So it bent the nail. So there's no way that thing could fall. And me and my mom were sitting there, and my grandma just passed away, and we're talking, and we're reminiscing. All of a sudden, it fell. And we're like, wow, that's odd. So I went to go look for it, and it's not there. And I go, what? So I look under my bed. So it fell and then dragged itself to the foot of my bed. So That doesn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then happen. so I was like, how did it end up over here? You know what I mean? So my mom goes, you know what? Let's just put it away and let's just let them rest in peace. Maybe that's what they want. You know, we'll just let them wow. rest in peace. We'll put it away. And I still don't – I have it, but I just have it put away. I don't hang it up anymore, even at my house. So – Things like that. Just little things like that I experienced, but nothing really major, major. Now, I don't know. Rev wants to experience some oh, stuff. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, let's go back. <laughs> and, and I haven't been shy about saying this. You know, I've, I've in, in talking with Kenny and with Dr. Yeah. Heather Lee, is just like, I, I, I'm not a skeptic, but I have questions. I've never had a paranormal experience, yeah. or I haven't noticed a paranormal experience. Right. And I think right. most of the time when I hear, like, it happened the other day, actually. I'm sitting down and I just hear a noise and I always okay that was probably this and go on with my day. Yeah. I don't and I think that's I think we talked about that. I think we I I just don't lend myself uh to uh to to think along those lines because my first thought is there's a natural explanation first. And if I can't figure out the natural like if I can't chalk it up yeah. to a natural explanation, then we'll start going down that line. But I do believe in the paranormal. I'm just really questioning how the paranormal 
expresses itself in in our material world. Uh, I, I am a believer. I am a, a, a Christian. I'm a believer in the Bible and Jesus and all that. Uh, uh, I just don't know how then that would translate more into like what what we see in. Uh, I don't want to call it pop- popular culture, but it has been popularized. Yeah. You know, because of movies oh, and yeah. books and stuff yeah. like that. But not to say that, not to denigrate it, but. That's just what people go to that extent. It's like when they talk about horror or, or, or hauntings, they automatically think, oh, like horror movies, you know, mm. like like Child's Play or Annabelle right. or the Amityville. Poltergeist yeah, movies. Yeah, The Conjurings and yeah. stuff like that. Everything's demonic. Everything's a demon. Everything has yeah. to be super evil. Yeah. yeah. See, now, now, and not to cut you off, but I, what, what I like in this too is, of course, everybody has the right to their own opinion, and I like how you, you approach this. But how I look at it is like, say, driving down the road, you don't know how many possible accidents, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, say you mm-hmm. go down the road, it's like, fuck, this guy just swerved, and I didn't even notice it, but he could have hit me. I didn't see it. I could say whatever. Just like when I see a red cardinal, is it people say it's your spirit? I always say, hi, mom. Oh, I always yeah. say it because yeah. it doesn't hurt anything. It makes me feel good. Right. And, yeah. and and I feel like it's just certain things, whether yeah. it's a song that comes on at the right time. That's yeah. awesome. <clears throat> yeah, if you just I think if, if you're aware to your surroundings, and of course you're not going to say, well, it's raining out, mom, love rain. Hi, mom. I mean, you're not gonna say every fucking thing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you, you got to a point. You got you you can't. You got to have some sort of because if you say that with everything, then nothing's gonna really hold credibility. Yeah, right. Well, there's a lot of things I think that happen to where, like you say, if you've holy shit, the, my mom's uh, obituary thing fell off the table and landed next to this plate. Um, I'm gonna use this plate tonight for some reason or whatever. Little things like yeah. that. So I guess to each their own. It depends. I like how you say it though. You're not exactly not open to it. You're just you kind of want more. And I'm the same way because I I'm I'm God. I'm a Catholic. I'm, I'm I very much believe in Jesus and God. But I've never seen them. But I feel yeah. like yeah. certain ways they're there for me. Yeah. Whether it's that stretch ticket I found when I needed five bucks for mm. gas and didn't yeah. have it, happen to find a <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little bullshit. It's like good luck or really I don't know. I think no, there's so you much you can yeah. really question. There's so much. Yeah. And I think half the time I go, fuck, I'm going to roll with it. I'll go down the street and I'll door dash. And like you guys said earlier, this in, in Maine, there are 16 and 1700 cemeteries, family cemeteries along the road. You look, there's eight graves here, six graves here. There's the Smiths. There's the water fields. Damn. So I just stop and I just take pictures and I just spend my days. Um, it's kind of off subject, I guess, but I, I guess spend <laughs> yeah, my days cool. just, just trying to. Yeah. And maybe that one place I go to where some, I'm like, I do some, I went to one place last week in New Hampshire. Um, Miss Mr. Smith, he served in the Civil War and the American Revolution. Uh, he was a sheriff in 1820 or 30 in New Hampshire. He apprehended a horse and buggy thief. The horse and buggy thief <laughs> shot him, dude. Oh wow! And he told he told the other sheriffs, "Don't lynch him! Don't lynch him! Let him live." Was, the dude, the sheriff that got shot, died six days later from blood infection. And the fucking dude that shot him now is arrested for murder, escaped jail, and was never seen again. Wow, and it, I've man. never heard this story, and now I know it. And people are like, "Thank you for sharing that." I never knew. Yeah, there's so much comfort that's untapped. So much. I love my Lizzie. I love Gettysburg. <laughs> I love New Orleans. There is so many things out there, and I'm gonna keep looking until I find my mom. Until yeah. I until until I find something to to maybe not so much proof to the world, proof to myself that this is all for naught. And that's yeah. why I do the history side because if I don't find a ghost, I found a cool 1800s fucking house where a red coat died or whatever yeah. you know what I mean? no like, that's cool but you know i do believe they speak to us uh case in point um yeah. my 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 my, uh, my wife just lost a cousin not too long ago you know and uh, after his passing we couldn't go to the burial or the funeral and the burial the rosary and the burial because we got covid we got sick so no. we just decided to stay okay baby no we can't make it whatever well my wife was upset about it of course you know she wanted to be there and everything but then a couple days later we find a white feather in our bathroom and no, there's there's no open window, no door, no nothing for that feather to be in there. Like who brought it in here? Why? And we Come still on, like, we why? still have it. You know, I, we just found it. It was just sitting there precariously, just placed on the on the counter. And one day, you I know, tell you. and and then one day, like no one messed with it. It was weird. And I noticed it day after, like two days in a row. Go, Babe, whose feather is that? She goes, I don't know. I thought you put it there. Junior, did you put that there? He's like, no. And then, you tell me, dude. And then I mean, so those, I, those can't write. They're not gonna leave you a voicemail. They're not yeah. gonna fucking heart. Well, I told them, I told my mom <laughs> about it. You know, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll leave you. They'll leave you little things because some can yeah. carry things even with the wind. They just go a little thing, and the feather comes. Well, and, and, I, and why not think it is him? What's that hurt? You know, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I, t- I asked my mom about it. Her opinion on it. She goes, Yeah. She goes. Sometimes they'll leave you pennies, or or you know, like you said, the cardinals stuff like that. And she goes, Yeah. If you just 
It, it, there's a thing though. If you just you're if you're aware of things, you'll start to notice things. It's sort of like when you buy a new car, then you start noticing everybody's driving the same car yeah, as you. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or yeah. or whatever yeah. whatever yeah. the case is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're like, so it's because yeah. you you now have been open to it. Now you now your now your third eye is a little more you know, yeah. uh, is tuning into that. You, you know. Uh, I, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. You know, so, and and and, and uh, manifesting your own yeah. reality. So, so to speak. and I know that we could go on for another hour, but I do. Oh, wanna, I do. I'm yeah, I, tell you, I, I want forty five already. We, we want to come right back with 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 our guest and talk about another. So there's a reason why I'm wearing this shirt. Oh yeah, and you got to find out. Oh yeah, why that is next week on next week's show. So we just want to thank our, our friend. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna show us right now. We want to thank our our new friend uh, Adam Vegan. Uh, from Maine, uh, we want to just say, <laughs> there you yeah. go. hold we're, on, we're gonna hold on, hold on. Gotta, so this, I have a universal belt, and I have driven all across America. I've driven to Boston. I got signings from Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Oh, great! Oh, nice. I got Braun Strowman. <laughs> I got Chris Jericho, six-time champ. When him and his band Fozzie came to Maine, I met them and had him sign it. Oh, jeez! I waited for I waited for four hours at a comic book store to meet Alexa Bliss. She had a comic come out. Dang, uh, I got Lace, nice. Lacey Evans, and uh, right here, and that is the Ronda Rousey autograph. Right. Oh, sick! Okay, so we're 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 gonna come back. Uh, and we're going to talk about all this stuff on the next episode. We just want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in to the TAP this week. Stay tuned. Uh, Adam's going to be right back. We're going to talk about his wrestling fascination with mine as well. This has been the TAP. Sir Rev, Play B, Adam, and you have been tapped.